today on Be Something Wonderful. Discover the ultimate Neville Goddard technique to manifest fast. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, good morning and welcome back to the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Here we are in the Dutch Caribbean on the beautiful island of Bonaire with another powerful video. Before I get started, I want to thank, I want to give a shout out and thank Hens, Sigrid, and uh, Alvaro at X Pro Divers here in Bonaire. They are the best at what they do and, and we're really having a good time diving every day here in, in Bonaire. I want to thank these guys just for the, they're just lovely people, wonderful friends, and an amazing dive shop. So if you're going to come to Bonaire, whether it's to get certified through the PADI certification or just enjoy diving, dive with these guys. Hens, Sigrid, and Alvaro at X Pro Divers. Love these guys. I want to talk about a question that came up from one of you that says, okay, I really understand the teachings of Neville Goddard and these other mystics or other teachers, other coaches, other gurus. But the, the, the real, they really were focused on how do I really manifest fast applying <laughs> the Neville Goddard teachings, right? Becoming that operant power to create your own reality. Well, guys, we really unpack this like we never have before and I want to share that with you this morning. Remember, the key to the metaphysical teachings of that famous mystic, Neville Goddard, who was famous back in the 50s and 60s with his teachings, right? And today, they're more popular than ever, right? There's thousands of YouTube channels that talk about and summarize and are experts on the Neville Goddard teachings. You can find information everywhere on, the, on his teachings, right? But, but what's, the, what's the key to all of it? Remember, to many, uh, Neville Goddard is their favorite. Why? Because it, it, it takes ideas like the law of attraction, the law of creating your own reality, and really gets it, boils it down to one point, that you manifest, create, and experience who and what you are conscious of being. In other words, the concept that you have of yourself in the world is your entire life experience. It boils down to that. There's a lot more in there, but it really boils down to that. You manifest, create, and experience who and what. You're conscious and aware of being and having, right, also. In other words, your concept of self or what many teachers call self-concept. But a lot go down the, the path of saying that you've got to improve or fix your self-concept. But it's never about that. It's about choosing. Choosing from your ultimate self-concept of I am. I am all that I desire and what, wish and want to be right now. And I merely have to choose and occupy that identity in reality here and now. Right? We've talked about that in many different ways. I am awareness or consciousness is the only reality. It's what scripture refers to as the one or the Lord or the law. I am God and there is no other. That's ultimate reality. It's the great isness of existence, of life itself. There's nothing that comes before or after this consciousness or this awareness. It's God. In the beginning, God. Right? In the beginning, this isness. God's name as revealed to Moses. I am who I am. I am that I am. That's my name for generations and generations to come. I am the great I am ultimate reality. I'm the source. I'm the substance. I'm the supply. I'm the first cause. That's why Jesus in the New Testament asked that question. Remember, Jesus, we're not talking about the religious aspects of this. We're talking about the metaphysical meaning of Jesus Christ. Your I am awareness. Your divine imagination expressed as human imagination through your 3D physical focus or perspective. Right? But who do you say that I am? Jesus asking his disciples, his disciples representing your own mind, right? Your own thoughts and assumptions. Who do you say you are? What are you assuming about yourself and your world? Because the answer to that question determines your entire life experience. There is no other law. There are no other rules, 
right? The great I am is ultimate reality. That's your great source, your substance, first causes of life. You are creating your life experience out of yourself. It's not out there. It's within you, the kingdom of heaven. But it's not even within or without. It just is. It's who you are. You are reality. You are all of it. God is. Life is. Existence just is. And you get to determine your expression of that. Let's talk about this. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, I am. Before Abraham, I am, as they said in Scripture. Just that isness, just that great existence itself. Right? That great pure knowing or pure awareness or pure consciousness of reality. Right? There's no such thing as non-existence. By definition, non-existence doesn't exist. There's only God. Out of this one great source or one great God is born the Son, the Son of God or I am awareness. Born of that Father or the isness or existence itself is the Son, the awareness of being or the beingness of reality, the beingness or what Neville Goddard referred to as divine imagination. Divine imagination is born out of that great I am, out of the great isness of reality. Divine imagination is that I am awareness being aware of itself as that great I am, as that great existence. That's the, fa that's the father in, in the son, right? The father of the great isness. In the beginning, just existence itself, life itself as isness. Then the born of that is the Son, the Son of God. I am awareness of being, that beingness, that isness now that can be anything. It's all potential to be anything. It's all potential forms. You see this, right? From the Father. And it's born as divine imagination. That's what Neville Goddard referred to as I am is all imagination, right? That God is imagination. It's that divine imagination. The absolute is God. God is. God is. Becoming or being aware of being all that is. That's the Son. So the Son or divine imagination is God, that great absolute isness. Becoming or being aware of being all that is, of being aware of being the all. The all is the all. The absolute is the absolute, but it becomes aware of itself through its Son. It's expressed. It's the expression of that isness of reality through its Son, the I am awareness or divine imagination. It's the one absolute ultimate reality being aware as the all. That's powerful. All that is is born, right, of that, of that great isness. It's all that is. It's all potential, right? The great I am in expression as awareness. That's God's Son. That's who you are. It's that great isness in expression as awareness or beingness or consciousness or divine imagination. The expressed name or nature of God. That's why the ancients say, whatever you ask in my name, in my nature, as that awareness, as all that isness, it shall be given you. It's, it's, not, it's not something in the future. It means it's guaranteed. It's done. It's, it's a conviction, right? That's the great I am in expression, expressing itself in its nature. Infinite beingness or potential to be anything. That's the birth of the one great divine mind. That's the Son of God. It's the birth of that one great knowing divine mind, that intelligent mind that many spiritual teachers have referred to, and scientists, right? That one, in, that one infinite universal mind, or the great consciousness, or the great subconscious is born out of that great isness of reality. That's the sun. That's what's called divine imagination, what Neville Goddard was referring to. It's the potential to be anything. They're, 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 so, they're, they're as infinite, finite expressions of the one divine mind. That's what it is that you are, right? As infinite, finite expressions of that one divine mind or divine imagination known as the Son of Man or the Son of God in expression as infinite or finite minds. So now you have the Son of God knowing itself through you as the Son of Man of finite expressions. They're right, infinite. This should say there are, not there as. There are infinite, finite expressions of the Son of God, this I am awareness, this one divine mind, all that is, or, or, or infinite, finite expressions of divine imagination 
known as the Son of Man. In other words, the Son of God in expression as infinite finite minds or human imagination. That's you, me, and everybody else. Infinite expressions of that finite, of that infinite expressions of that one infinite, one divine mind. But these are finite expressions. In other words, they're focused viewpoints or perspectives that we all have that are shifting and changing in every moment. Right? There's only one mind. There are not infinite, finite minds. Those are just expressions of that one infinite human imagination or divine imagination that we call or Neville Goddard calls human imagination. That's what he meant. Right? That one son of God, all that is, right? expressed in, in infinite, finite expressions of that one divine mind called the Son of Man. That's why Jesus was called, in Scripture, they referred to him as the Son of Man and the Son of God. That's the metaphysical meaning of your physically focused experience. That's always shifting. It's always changing. You are the Son of God in expression. You're that I am awareness in expression as, as infinite, finite minds of human imagination. What Neville Goddard called. Therefore, who and what you imagine and assume yourself, I am, to be, in other words, your impression of yourself. That's, the whole, that's where the whole idea of impressing the subconscious came from. What's your impression of yourself, right? Who and what you imagine, your human imagination, yourself to be, your impression, you express that impression as a physically focused experience in time and space. It's all you, right? That's, what the, that's the whole basis of the law of assumption. Right? Neville got its teaching, what you imagine and assume yourself to be <clears throat> as human imagination, as an expression, as a finite expression of that infinite the one divine mind or divine imagination. Right? You create manifest, you create manifest an experience, linear horizontals unfoldings of your true vertical name or nature, I am. You see that. You create, you manifest, you experience a linear horizontal unfolding, infinite experiences, of that vertical nature or name of who you really are. That's powerful. So the question, the question is, from what viewpoint, what vantage point, what perspective are you imagining and assuming yourself and your world to be? That's the only question. There are infinite perspectives. There are infinite finite expressions or infinite finite vantage points or viewpoints or perspectives from which you can see yourself as that one divine imagination, as that one divine mind through your human imagination. What you imagine your life to be, what you imagine yourself to be, what you assume yourself to be. This is powerful. That's what the law of assumption is based on. That's why in Matthew 16, 13, Jesus asked, Jesus, your I am awareness, not only your divine imagination, but your human imagination, both the Son of God and the Son of Man in expression, asked this, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That's your human imagination asking. Who do they say that, that divine imagination in expression as human imagination is? Right? Who do they say that I? Divine imagination in expression as human imagination, as the Son of Man am, expressed by and through you in the form of assumptions of self and self-concept. Wow. That divine imagination as human imagination is expressed through you by your impressions or assumptions about yourself and others in the world. When, when Jesus talks about men here, He's referring to the changing forms and appearances of both the seen and unseen manifested world. In other words, the changing people, events, and things, and the changing thoughts and feelings. The, the seen people, events, and things, and the unseen thoughts and feelings. But they're both manifestations of the, of the world, of the physical experience. And then his disciples answer, right? They say, well, some say John the Baptist, others, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets, both dead and alive, right? Seen and unseen, right? They go, but then Jesus pushes back and says, yeah, okay, but 
Who do you say that I am? Powerful question. Not, not these changing forms and appearances, not these changing thoughts and feelings that take place in your awareness, but who do you say? Yeah, we know your human imagination as divine imagination. Who do you say you are? Not what your past has told you or your past childhood or past dramas and traumas. Not what your current manifested circumstances are telling you. Not what others are pointing to or the manifested world appears to say. But rather here and now, who do you say that I am? Not your past assumptions, not your past beliefs, not your changing thoughts, feelings, and appearances. Everything's here and now. There really is no such thing as a past belief or a past assumption because there is no past. Your assumptions and beliefs are actually new in every moment. And right, you go, oh no, I, this is a, an assumption I've had before and a belief I have that No, it's new right now. And you can decide whether to keep assuming and believing it or not. This is powerful. So who do you say that I am? Then Simon Peter answers, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Matthew 16, 16. You are divine imagination. You are the one divine mind. You are all that is in expression as human imagination, as the son of man. You're the one absolute reality, the son of the living God, the son of that one absolute isness of reality, that absolute great I am or God is, that ultimate reality. You're the son of that living God, of that living reality, of that life as the son of, of divine imagination in expression as human imagination. Divine imagining and human imagining are not two powers at all, rather one. Neville got it. This is powerful because even this person said, yeah, but it's keyed low. Like Neville got it talks about human imagination being keyed low. And they were using that as an excuse that things aren't manifesting or they're not creating their own reality. It's not your imagination that's keyed low. Be careful here, right? Divine imagination, human imagination are not two powers at all. They're rather one. It's one power. It's not the imagination that's keyed low. You're the operant power. You're the center. Human imagination or assumptions are not keyed low but you may be. <laughs> in other words, you may be creating an experience of being keyed low by feeling that it's me out here and not I am as the center of that one divine mind, as the center of all that is. Do you see it? So it's not the imagining that's keyed low. Or the, there is no out there, so it's not out there that's keyed low. It's who do you say you are? That's why Simon Peter answered, you're Christ, the son of the living God. You're not keyed low. You're both the son of God and the son of man. You are assuming and imagining from a me perspective, them perspective, a world out there perspective, not from here I am as, as Moses answered God, here I am. Moses, Moses, here I am. Not the me out here. That's powerful. If you want to see your life take off, if you want to start seeing everything that you've ever imagined start unfolding right in front of your eyes, Declare, assume, and imagine as the center of that one divine mind. It's not the me and what's going on out there. It's not keyed low. Your imagination is one. You, what you imagine, what you assume, what you say with your words, I am. That's all power. They're not two powers. They're one power. It's not keyed low. It's your perspective or viewpoint or vantage point that is creating the experience of that being keyed low. It's your you can only have a, a, a low keyed ex uh, assumption or experience of who you are, but you're not keyed low, but you can create that experience, right? You can create a, a, an experience as A Course in Miracles says you can create an experience of littleness, right? Of being keyed low, but you're magnificent. You're unlimited. You're boundless. Imagine it now, assume it now, create that two or three second imaginal seam or frame of being congratulated or being with your SP or getting a, an engagement ring, whatever it is, right? Or a, a bunch of money or moving decimal points on your bank account as one of you did. They imagined $11, they moved a decimal point at the end of the three zeros and they manifested $11,000. They know they're not key low now. They know it's not that. It's not their imagining that's key low. It's their perspective or viewpoint. And you can have any perspective or viewpoint or vantage point you want as divine imagination. 
Try it, assume it, do it today. Discover the ultimate Neville Goddard technique to manifest fast. <laughs> I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful, for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, TikTok at Be Something Wonderful, and our membership channel a week from this Sunday, 9 a.m. Pacific time in the U.S. I'm going to have another live stream. This is September. It's not September. This is November 16th. Saturday morning at 9 a.m., just a week from Sunday. I'm gonna have another live stream for you. Be sure to join us. If you're a member, join us. If you're not a member, check out the link below. We also have more content coming, another video being queued up for the membership channel. This is all coming, guys, with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude. This is Tom Karen here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful here in the Dutch Caribbean on the island of Bonaire. Until next time, we'll see you soon.